Level zero. At level zero, the earth feels calm, solid, permanent. You step outside, plant your feet on the ground, and it seems unshakable, as if the planet itself could never betray you. But that's only an illusion. Beneath this quiet surface, the tectonic plates, massive slabs of rock the size of continents, are slowly grinding against each other. They move just a few centimeters a year, but the pressure building up along their edges is immense, like a giant spring being wound tighter and tighter. This no-quake level is where most of us spend our lives. Entire cities are built, highways paved, skyscrapers raised, under the assumption that the ground beneath will stay put. And most of the time, it does. But deep below, the forces that shape mountains and rip open ocean trenches are silently storing energy, waiting for the moment when something gives. Think of level zero as the calm before the storm, a ticking clock we can't hear. In Japan, California, or along the Himalayas, scientists know that when the earth is quiet for too long, it's not a sign of safety, it's a warning. The longer the silence, the more violent the eventual release can be. It's almost unsettling to realize, at level zero, nothing is happening on the surface, but everything is happening underground. The plates don't stop moving just because we're not feeling it. They are preparing the next chapter. So, while level zero may look like peace, it's really pressure. Hidden tension. The stage being set for what comes next, when the Earth finally decides to remind us that it was never as solid as we thought. Level one. At level one, the ground finally stirs. The quake is so small, usually below magnitude three, that most people don't even notice it. You might feel a faint vibration underfoot, as if a heavy truck just rolled past your house. In fact, that's exactly how many people describe it. A quick rumble over almost before you've had time to register it. These tremors happen all the time. In seismically active regions like California or Chile, thousands of level one quakes ripple through the crust every year, recorded only by sensitive seismographs. For scientists, they're a reminder that the plates are still shifting, still straining against each other, and still storing energy for something larger. Every once in a while, though, people do feel them. In offices, workers glance around, wondering if anyone else noticed the desk wobble. On the street, you might hear a window rattle or see a light fixture sway gently. It's subtle, but enough to jolt the mind into realizing, wait, that wasn't a truck. Level 1 quakes rarely cause damage. A glass might rattle on a shelf, maybe a door creaks in its frame, but nothing more. And yet, the psychological effect can be profound. That fleeting second where the ground shifts beneath you is disorienting because it challenges a deep assumption that the earth is steady. For locals in quake-prone regions, level one is background noise, something to shrug off. But to someone experiencing it for the first time, even the tiniest tremor can feel eerie, like a whispered warning from beneath the surface. Because while level one doesn't topple buildings, it tells us something important. The plates are in motion, and this was just the smallest glimpse of what they're capable of. Level two. At level two, earthquakes become harder to ignore. Typically ranging from magnitude 3 to 4, these quakes are strong enough to make everyone in the area pause and wonder what just happened. Unlike the faint rumble of level 1, this is a physical jolt, a sharp shake that might rattle dishes, swing light fixtures, or even make you grab the nearest table for balance. People often describe level 2 as the first quake that feels real. You're sitting at home, and suddenly the floor shifts beneath you. It might only last a few seconds, but it's powerful enough to startle. If you're near windows, you'll hear the glass hum. If you're outside, you may see power lines swaying or birds taking flight in alarm. Damage is still unlikely at this stage. Old plaster walls may crack, small objects might fall from shelves, but buildings generally remain unharmed. Still, level two marks the threshold where earthquakes transition from background tremors into disruptive events. Emergency lines often get calls after these quakes, not for destruction, but from people asking, was that an earthquake or am I imagining things? In earthquake-prone cities like Tokyo or Los Angeles, Level 2 quakes are a familiar part of life. They remind residents that they live on restless ground. In places where earthquakes are rare, however, even a small one can cause panic. Offices may briefly evacuate. Schools may usher kids outside, all four. A quake that scientists would consider minor. Level 2 is the warning nudge. The Earth's way of saying, I can move you. Nothing catastrophic yet, but enough to unsettle your sense of safety. Because after this point, the quakes don't just get more noticeable, they start to get dangerous. Level 3. At level 3, earthquakes are no longer just curious jolts. They're events people remember. Typically in the magnitude 4 to 5 range, these quakes are strong enough to rattle entire neighborhoods, shake walls, and cause light structural damage. It's the kind of quake that makes you rush outside heart pounding, even if nothing actually collapses. Inside homes, shelves may empty, picture frames can crash to the floor, and weak plaster walls might crack. Windows can rattle violently, and in older buildings, you might even see small pieces of masonry chip away. It's unsettling not just because of the sound, the deep groan of the earth beneath you, but because it becomes obvious that the ground isn't just rumbling. It's moving with enough force to harm what you've built. 
Businesses in quake-prone regions often report losses at this level, with merchandise sliding off racks and factories halting production lines. In offices, ceiling tiles can loosen, and in schools, the quake might spark official drills or emergency procedures. Power can flicker, and in rare cases, utility lines may even sustain minor damage. In cities that experience frequent seismic activity, level 3 is often brushed off as moderate. But in regions unprepared for quakes, this level can feel like the end of the world. Imagine being in a quiet suburban neighborhood when suddenly the walls rumble, the lights swing, and the sound of breaking glass erupts all around. This is where earthquakes cross the line from harmless to harmful. Level 3 doesn't typically kill, but it shakes away the illusion of safety. For many people, this is the first quake where fear sets in. Not just surprise, because from here, the damage only grows more serious, and the consequences harder to ignore. Level 4. At level 4, earthquakes cross a dangerous threshold. Usually in the magnitude 5 to 6 range, these quakes can cause widespread structural damage, especially to older or poorly built buildings. Walls can crack open, rooftops may shift, and in the worst cases, entire small structures collapse. What was once just rattling glass now becomes the sound of snapping wood, groaning metal, and crashing brick. In residential neighborhoods, chimneys topple and brick facades peel away like they were made of paper. Furniture is thrown across rooms, not just shaken in place. In city streets, falling debris becomes a real hazard, forcing people to run outside into the open, often more afraid of collapsing walls than the quake itself. Public infrastructure also begins to suffer at this stage. Roads can crack, small landslides may block highways, and bridges that aren't reinforced can show visible stress. Power outages spread more widely as transformers and lines take damage. Emergency crews often respond immediately because even if casualties are low, the fear and chaos are undeniable. Real-world examples include the 2001 Nisqually earthquake in Washington state, a magnitude 6.8 that injured hundreds and caused billions in damage, despite being centered deep underground. Even with modern engineering, buildings in downtown Seattle showed scars, and parts of older infrastructure had to be rebuilt. Level 4 quakes remind us of just how fragile human construction can be. What's most unsettling is how fast it happens. Seconds of shaking and familiar streets look unrecognizable. And while this level isn't usually catastrophic for modern cities, it delivers a chilling realization. If a quake just a little stronger were to hit, the destruction could multiply rapidly. This is the level where preparedness shifts from optional to essential. Level 5. At level 5, earthquakes enter the magnitude 6 to 7 range, a point where destruction becomes widespread and impossible to ignore. Unlike moderate quakes, which mainly damage weaker structures, these events strike across entire cities, leaving both old and modern buildings at risk. Concrete can shear apart, entire walls collapse, and multi-story buildings may tilt or crumble. Even reinforced structures designed to resist shaking can show cracks or partial failures. Highways split open like broken bones, and bridges sway so violently that crossing them is a gamble with fate. Inside homes, heavy appliances topple, glass shatters everywhere, and even people who have practiced safety drills often find themselves overwhelmed by the chaos. The 1994 Northridge earthquake in Los Angeles is a haunting example. With a magnitude of 6.7, it killed 57 people, injured thousands, and caused over $40 billion in damage. Freeway overpasses collapsed, apartment complexes folded, and fires erupted from broken gas lines, showing how one disaster can quickly cascade into many. Another terrifying feature of Level 5 quakes is their ability to reshape the land itself. Ground ruptures can tear open, swallowing roads or splitting properties in half. Liquefaction, where solid ground briefly behaves like quicksand, can sink buildings into the earth. For those who survive, the aftermath is equally grim. Power grids, water supplies, and hospitals are often crippled. Entire communities may be forced to evacuate, while rescue crews sift through rubble for survivors. Level 5 earthquakes leave scars not only on cities, but also on the people who endure them. They serve as a sobering reminder. At this stage, the quake is no longer just an inconvenience or a localized disaster. It's a regional crisis with long-lasting consequences. Level 6. At level 6, earthquakes unleash magnitude 7 to 8 power, transforming what might have been a citywide crisis into a regional catastrophe. These are the events that dominate headlines, overwhelm governments, and scar history. At this scale, the shaking is so violent that few structures escape unscathed. Reinforced buildings collapse, ancient monuments crumble, and entire neighborhoods can be reduced to fields of debris. Skyscrapers sway like trees in a storm, their glass exteriors raining shards onto the streets below. Roads buckle, airports become unusable, and vital supply chains grind to a halt. One of the clearest examples is the 2010 Haiti earthquake, which struck at magnitude 7.0.
Though not the strongest quake by numbers, it devastated a nation unprepared for such force, killing over 200,000 people and displacing millions. The scale of human suffering showed that vulnerability, population density, and poor infrastructure can make a level 6 quake almost apocalyptic. Another infamous example is the 2008 Sichuan earthquake in China, magnitude 7.9. Entire towns were flattened, and school buildings collapsed with children inside, sparking outrage and grief. Landslides buried whole villages, while survivors endured days of trapped under rubble as rescuers raced against time. Beyond the collapse of human structures, the earth itself reshapes violently at this stage. Mountainsides shear off in landslides, rivers change course, and entire coastlines can shift. If undersea, the sudden release of energy can trigger massive tsunamis, compounding the destruction far beyond the epicenter. A level 6 earthquake isn't just a disaster, it's a turning point in history. Survivors often describe it as the moment when their world split in two, before the quake and after it. Level 7 At level 7, earthquakes cross into the magnitude 8 to 8.5 range, an order of destruction so severe it's capable of collapsing entire cities. These are among the most powerful quakes humans have ever endured so violent that survival often comes down to chance rather than preparation. The shaking lasts minutes instead of seconds, giving buildings and bridges no reprieve. Even well-engineered structures designed to withstand tremors may fail under prolonged stress. Whole city blocks can collapse in domino fashion, leaving behind jagged piles of concrete and twisted steel. Underground pipelines rupture, igniting fires that spread uncontrollably through broken streets. Power lines fall, plunging survivors into darkness, while hospitals and emergency services themselves are torn apart in the chaos. One of the clearest examples is the 1906 San Francisco earthquake, estimated magnitude 7.9. The quake itself caused massive structural damage, but the aftermath was even worse. Gas lines ruptured, igniting fires that burned for days and destroyed most of the city. It became a grim reminder that at this scale, quakes don't just topple buildings. They ignite secondary disasters that can erase a metropolis. Another case is the 1964 Great Alaska Earthquake, magnitude 9.2, which fits this destructive level in intensity. Anchorage suffered catastrophic damage with ground fissures, collapsed neighborhoods, and tsunamis that rippled across the Pacific. Whole swaths of land dropped by over 20 feet, permanently altering Alaska's landscape. At level 7, the disaster is not confined to one moment. The destruction lingers in the form of homelessness, famine, disease, and long-term displacement. A single event can change the trajectory of an entire nation. This is no longer just a natural hazard. It is the complete dismantling of urban life in the span of a few terrifying minutes. Level 8 Level 8 earthquakes enter the magnitude 8.5 to 9.0 range. Events so rare and catastrophic they're etched into human memory as civilization-shaking disasters. At this level, the quake is not just a local tragedy. It becomes a regional or even continental crisis. Unlike smaller quakes that topple a few cities, megaquakes affect entire nations. The ground heaves like waves on the ocean, with shaking lasting five minutes or more. Skyscrapers sway dangerously, bridges snap like twigs, and coastlines collapse into the sea. The release of energy is almost beyond comprehension, comparable to the detonation of several nuclear arsenals all at once. The most infamous example is the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, magnitude 9.1. It ruptured more than 900 miles of seafloor, displacing so much water that it triggered one of the deadliest tsunamis in history. Waves up to 100 feet high struck 14 countries, killing over 230,000 people. Towns vanished beneath the water, and coastlines were permanently redrawn. Another example is the 2011 Tohoku earthquake in Japan, magnitude 9.0. It devastated cities, triggered a towering tsunami, and led to the Fukushima nuclear disaster, proving how megaquakes unleash chain reactions that extend far beyond shaking. The cost wasn't just in lives, but in generations of fallout and displacement. At level 8, resilience breaks down. No matter how modern or wealthy a nation is, no infrastructure is fully prepared. Even advanced earthquake-resistant engineering struggles to withstand the sheer length and magnitude of these events. Recovery can take decades, and the scars, both physical and psychological, may never fully heal. This is where earthquakes stop being measured in casualties or dollars, and instead are remembered as historical turning points. Level 9 At level 9, we're in the realm of magnitude 9.5 and above. Earthquakes so immense they alter not just cities or nations, but the entire planet. These quakes are the absolute giants, capable of shifting Earth's rotation by fractions of a second and permanently reshaping continents. The strongest ever recorded was the 1960 Valdivia earthquake in Chile, a staggering magnitude 9.5. The shaking lasted nearly 10 minutes, 
collapsing entire regions and triggering landslides, volcanic activity, and tsunamis that cross the Pacific Ocean. The waves reached as far as Japan and the Philippines, killing thousands halfway around the world. In Chile itself, entire towns were erased, and the death toll soared into the thousands, leaving behind destruction still remembered as almost biblical. At this level, the energy released is beyond imagination. A single mega-rupture can unleash the equivalent of billions of tons of TNT. The ground doesn't just shake. It behaves like a liquid, rolling in waves that can fling vehicles into the air. Infrastructure designed to resist quakes is torn apart, and survival often depends on sheer luck. Even more terrifying, level 9 quakes can reshape coastlines permanently. Sections of land may sink below sea level while others rise up by several feet. In Chile, farmlands dropped beneath the ocean, and in Alaska's 1964 magnitude 9.2 quake, entire harbors were lifted out of the water. At this scale, recovery is measured in generations, not years. The psychological scars linger as survivors describe the sound of the Earth itself screaming, an unending roar as if the planet were being torn apart. Level 9 is the point where humanity truly realizes. The ground beneath us, which feels so solid, can turn against us with force that shakes the entire Earth. Level 10. At level 10, we leave the boundaries of recorded history and step into the theoretical endgame of seismic power. These are quakes so massive, magnitude 10 or higher, that they exist only in models and speculation. Scientists believe they could only occur along the very longest fault lines on Earth, rupturing thousands of miles in one catastrophic movement. The sheer energy is almost incomprehensible. A magnitude 10 would release the equivalent of dozens of nuclear arsenals detonating at once, shaking the planet for hours, not minutes. Entire continents could shudder violently, with cities thousands of miles apart feeling the devastation simultaneously. Buildings wouldn't just collapse, they would disintegrate. Infrastructure shredded like paper. The tsunamis unleashed by such a rupture would be on a global scale. Waves hundreds of feet high could slam into coastlines on every ocean, inundating countries far from the quake's origin. Ports, cities, and low-lying regions might be permanently erased. And yet the most frightening part isn't just the destruction on the surface. A magnitude 10-plus quake could alter Earth's rotation more dramatically than any event we've recorded. Days could shorten, poles might shift slightly, and the planet's crust itself would be permanently rearranged. Some scientists speculate that in Earth's deep past, quakes of this scale may have contributed to mass extinction events, sparking volcanic chains, massive climate disruption, and oceanic chaos. Fortunately, such an event is vanishingly rare. The tectonic plates would need to align in the worst possible way, a rupture thousands of kilometers long, slipping dozens of meters all at once. It's the kind of disaster that might happen only once in tens of millions of years. Level 10 isn't just a natural disaster. It's the Earth reminding us that beneath our feet lies a force powerful enough to end civilizations, or perhaps life itself. 